Well, good morning and welcome to Green Lake and Woodland Park Churches. It is wonderful to see you here. If this is your first time ever joining us online, we're glad you're here. If you've come here to just check us out and see what our churches are all about, thanks. We're glad you joined us. Uh, however you have decided to come to this service, welcome. We're glad that you're part of our church. I do want to let you know that we are meeting live in person in the sanctuaries, Green Lake at 930, Woodland Park at 11. Um, we do have worship services on Sunday mornings. Uh, we are wearing masks. There is no congregational singing allowed at this time just yet, but uh, we are taking every safety precaution to make sure that you are safe at church uh, so that uh, we can all be part of the community of faith. But this is participation in the community of faith, too. Don't think that it's not. We're glad that you're here. Let's go to church.
up to then is this. No more lies, no more pretense. Tell your neighbor the truth. In Christ's body we're all connected to one another after all. When you lie to others you end up lying to yourself. It's okay to be angry, but don't use your anger as fuel for revenge. And try not to stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Don't give evil that kind of foothold in your life. Did you used to make ends meet by stealing? Well, no more. Don't make a dishonest living. Get an honest job so you can help others who can't work. Watch the way you talk. Let nothing mean or hurtful come out of your mouth. Say only what helps, each word a gift. Don't grieve God. Don't break God's heart. The Holy Spirit moving and breathing in you is the most intimate part of your life, making you fit for God's self. Don't take such a gift for granted. Make a clean break with all cutting, backbiting, slanderous talk. Be gentle with one another, sensitive, kind. Forgive one another as quickly and thoroughly as God in Christ forgives you. Pay attention to what God does and then imitate it, like children who learn good behavior from a good teacher. Mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with God and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. Jesus didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. This is a fascinating piece of scripture, this, pat, this passage from Ephesians. Um, a lot of don't do this, do that instead, right? That, that's, that seems to be a pretty steady theme throughout this passage. Uh, have you made ends meet by stealing? Stop it. Get an honest job. Do an honest day's work. And help those who can't help themselves. Okay, well, there's some validity in that. But, you know, not everybody can relate to uh, making a living or making ends meet by stealing. What I want to look at is the fact that you can read these passages read these little chunks of scripture and you can focus on the don't do that 
or you can focus on the do this instead. Uh, it is helpful in the way that it says, have you had this problem? Here's a way of addressing it. Uh, but it's a little simplistic and a little moralistic, to be honest. Um, but I want to focus on the do this instead part. How do we clear out the clutter from our minds? How do we clear out the clutter from our souls, from our bodies, from our spirit? How do we clear out the clutter that leads us down the wrong path so that we can head up the right path? One of my favorite Thomas Merton quotes reads, Our minds are like crows. They pick up everything that glitters, no matter how uncomfortable our nests get with all that metal in them. Our minds are like crows. They pick up everything that glitters, no matter how uncomfortable our nests get with all that metal in them. So how do you understand the metal that we pick up and keep in our nests? In reading that quote through the lens of this Ephesians passage, some of the metal that we pick up that makes our nests uncomfortable are bad habits. The bad habit of yelling to get our way. The bad habit of being overly confrontational. Not just, you know, beyond being assertive, being downright aggressive. Of hateful, backbiting, unkind speech. Talking one another down instead of building one another up. We pick up these bad habits. And we collect them in the nest. And it doesn't matter how uncomfortable that nest gets with all of that clutter in it. We continue to hang on to our bad habits of being confrontational and mean. Hurting other people to get what we want. We hold on to the bad habits of hanging on to grudges for years and years and years. We hold on to the bad habits of engaging in rumors and gossip and speaking ill of people behind their backs. Now you may not be guilty of all of those. I doubt that any of us are guilty of all of those. You might be. But these are the bad habits that we pick up and we clutter our nests with. We clutter our souls. We clutter our minds with these bad habits of backbiting and talking bad about other people and spreading gossip and rumors and uh, allowing other people to fail so that we can succeed. Um, we hold on to bad habits of um, winning an argument by being the loudest. We hold on to bad habits of conduct unbecoming of a follower of Christ. One of my favorite guitarists liked saying that uh, some people get their jollies by being sleazy people. I get my jollies by playing sleazy guitar. And his music is delightfully sleazy. <laughs> it's, he's right. Uh, his, his music um, expresses that part of himself. Some folks express their anger through art or music as a way of squeezing it out of themselves or pouring it out of themselves so that they don't have to hold on to it and cling to it, leave it in the nest as clutter. Some folks write it out, whether they're writing fiction, whether they are researching nonfiction that applies to something in their lives, whether they're writing songs or poems, architecture. Why did I say it like that? Architecture? <laughs> um, with architecture or design. They are expressing something within themselves that helps to get rid of the clutter. It squeezes 
those nasty, terrible feelings out of us and helps us to let go. As I said earlier in the service, one of the definitions of express is to squeeze out. And as much as we like to talk about things like letting go, like letting go of grudges, letting go of bad habits, letting go of things, we, we speak very freely about what do we need to let go of? Um, when often it's really not that easy. Uh, letting go sounds good, and it sounds freeing, and it sounds wonderful. But the fact of the matter is, sometimes these things have to be squeezed out of us. We have to squeeze it out. Uh, I've had to squeeze out grudges before. Letting go was not this painless process of just... Letting go can be a painful process of squeezing it out of myself. And I've paid therapists good money to squeeze it out of me. And only after squeezing it out did I realize that so much better off without it. So much better off without it. I mean, there's a part of me that knew I would be, but engaging in the process of squeezing it out so that I could let it go, of expressing it so that I could let it go, of pouring it out of myself so that I could let it go. This passage of scripture is attributed to the Apostle Paul. And if you've spent time in church and studied, you, you know Paul has an interesting story. I mean, he is a person who, if we take the magic out of the story, if we take the, uh, uh, the miraculous elements that can distract us from the core of the plot, um, he is a person who came to a crossroads in his life where he had to let go of participating in a religious system that was death-dealing and hurtful and oppressive, and then to decide, really, to pick up a religious system that was life-giving and life-affirming. Now, he didn't always get it right. I will argue with Paul on several points. I like to take Brian McLaren's advice and read Paul through a Jesus lens rather than try to interpret Jesus through Paul's lens. So I will disagree with Paul on some points and try to do so from a standpoint of Jesus and, and how I understand Jesus. But that's beside the point. The story is of a person who poured out, or squeezed out, some of his guilt and some of his shame. Part of his testimony was that he was at the execution of the Apostle Stephen. And while he didn't participate in rolling the rocks onto Stephen, he stood by and held the coats of those who did. He was complicit. Part of his testimony is that he was a persecutor of Christians. He liked giving Jesus' followers a hard time. And then he had an encounter with Jesus where he said, you know, I've been participating in a system that is bent on keeping people out and I think Jesus wants me to participate in a system that invites people in and you know not everybody has a wonderfully dramatic testimony like Paul I remember being at my son's baseball practice years ago and a lady was talking about how at her church one of the 
it was an evangelical pole barn church by the interstate. We like to call them in the Midwest. Um, uh, you know, it was built on the mega church model. And one of the things that happened in worship regularly was someone would stand up and give a testimony. And the testimony was always dramatic. It was always the, I was a sleaze bag. I was a failure. I was a horrible person until I met Jesus. And now my life is turned around. Basic plot line. I mean, there's your outline. You had to start with that. And then you fill in the details from your personal life. Uh, and she said, you know, that someone had given a testimony and it was really moving and really cool. And then she said, but my testimony would be really boring. Some of us have a great dramatic testimony. Some of us have a wonderfully dramatic um, uh, sort of turnaround in our lives. And, and some of us really don't. Our testimony would be kind of dull. And yet that dull, boring testimony by those standards uh, might be really moving to an awful lot of people. But I digress. My point here, and I do have one, is that um, regardless of how boring or mundane our testimony is, no matter how boring and mundane the shiny metal objects that we hold on to that are cluttering the nests of our souls, no matter uh, if it's a big dramatic thing that we need to let go of or something smaller and more subtle. Um, we all have something that we need to express from our nests. We all have something that we need to let go of. We all have something that we need to squeeze out and pour out and express so that we can be spiritually and emotionally and even physically healthy. We all have something that we can let go of, whether that's self-centeredness, whether that is inherent bias, uh, whether that is forms of media that feed toxic stuff within us, uh, whether it's an attitude, whether it's a habit, whether it's a grudge, uh, whether it's a sustained negative emotion, whether it's a tendency to be overly critical of ourselves and beat ourselves up, uh, whether it's any of those things or more, we've all got something that we need to pour out. And it's not as easy as just asking Jesus to do it, but I think the first step is to recognize it, give it a name, and to begin a process. The first step is to just sort of identify it and name it and claim it and, and, and label it as something I need to pour out, something I need to, to squeeze out, something I need to let go of something that needs to be expressed from me. And, and whether you do that through art, whether you do it through music, whether you do it through poetry, whether you do it through design, whether you do it through any venue of creativity that you have, and we all have one, whether you think you do or not, um, you can express, you can squeeze out, you can pour out, you can let go of um, the negative stuff in your life. I wish it was as easy as a list of don't do this, do this instead, like Ephesians gives us. And I wish it was as easy as 
name it, claim it, let it go, and it's gone. Sometimes it's a real process and a real struggle, and sometimes it requires a lot of help from somebody else. Um, you can't become who you're supposed to be. You can't become your true self all by yourself. We become our true selves together. Together with one another, with the gathered community of faith, with God. I ask you this morning, what needs to be expressed from you? What needs to be uh, worked out of your nest? What, what are the shiny objects that have cluttered up the nest and made it uncomfortable to live there? What are the bad habits, the bad emotions, the, the painful stuff that makes your life uncomfortable? It makes your life hard to live. You need to enter into a process of expressing and letting go. We'll spend some time on that at prayer time. But for right now, what I want you to know is that there's good news. And the gospel is that when the church is at its best, and when church folks are at our best, it's when we are embodying the love of God, when we are embodying the grace of God, when we embody the goodness of God by lending an ear, by not being harsh and judgmental and critical, but by being supportive and kind and helpful when we say I don't have a solution to your problem but I'll sit with you we can be such a church we can have such a church and with God's help we will find ways of expressing the stuff that we need to let go of. Because when we do, the world will be a better place. Our community will be a better place to live. Our church will be a better place to attend. Our, our homes will be a better place to visit. Our lives will be a better place to live. Our nests will be a more comfortable place to sit. Amen. As we enter into a time of prayer, I invite you to take some paper and pen, or you can simply use your imagination and think of something that you need to pour out. Something that you need to forgive or begin to forgive. Something that you need to let go of or begin the process letting go of. Something that you need to squeeze out or to begin the process of squeezing out. Something inside of you that you need to name. And you can simply write it down. Like this. And as the prayer concludes, you are invited to tear it. You can tear it into a hundred little pieces if you like. Or you can gesture with a symbolic act of letting go. So during prayer time, especially as we pray for ourselves and for others, write something down or name it out loud or name it in your mind, in your imagination, and imagine decluttering your nest. Of the things you need to let go of. Let's pray. Thank you.
O breathing life, your name shines everywhere. Release a space to plant your presence here. Imagine your possibilities now. Embody your desire in every light and form. Grow through us this moment's bread and wisdom. Untie the knots of failure binding us as we release the strands we hold of others' faults. Help us not forget our source, yet free us from not being in the present. From you arises every vision, power, and song from gathering to gathering. Amen. Again, I thank you for being here. Uh, it was wonderful to be in God's presence with you. Don't forget that we have online giving available. Uh, our church brings good things to your life. Our church brings good things to our community. We have a bold vision for moving forward in our life of faith and in our community. And uh, we ask that you can be a part of our story. You can be a part of who we are and what we are doing. And part of that is your financial support. Uh, please give as generously as you are able and willing. Uh, links for online giving will be in the description. You can find that uh, by looking at these videos on your computer, on your phone. Uh, we can also accept ch uh, checks by mail, uh, and you can drop offerings off at the office if you like. Any way you like to give, we appreciate it, because your support makes all the difference. Thank you. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. Uh, that makes these videos easier to find every week. And I invite you to share the video. If you thought this was a good worship service and you want to share it with someone, someone you've thought about inviting to church, send them a link. You can send them this link and um, we sure would appreciate it. And now, my friends, my church family, this service is ended, but our life in Christ goes on and on. May your faith be so real and your joy so obvious that all who see you come to praise God. Go in peace.